Okay, this is the wasp. We took off the buckwheat at Famosa Slough. You can see the three body parts. This wasp has a head, thorax, abdomen. That's the traditional three body parts of the class Insecta. Up on the head, antennae, sensory structures usually for feeling, smelling, in some cases tasting, very sensitive structures, the antenna. Also on the head are the compound eyes. We'll have a closer look later on, but compound eyes are special in the insect world. Two pairs of wings. This doesn't look like two, looks like maybe one pair. Notice the veins gives it support, rigidness. From the thorax comes the legs as well as the wings. A little narrow wasp on this wasp to the abdomen. So you've got internal organs on the abdomen as well as the thorax. Let's turn this girl over. It's a female. Underneath part of the wasp, little mouth structure. And you can see the six legs, three pairs of legs on the thorax as well. Okay, let's go to the close-up. Here's the head of the wasp from the ventral view, the belly side. A little hard to see, but these structures right here are the mandibles. You can see the base of the antennae. Compound eyes are dark. They're in the picture as well. So those are the main functions on the head. The compound eyes, the antennae, and the mouth parts. We can see the base of the antennae. We can see the huge compound eye. Wasps are excellent visually. We can also see mouth parts. This wasp nectars on flowers. This little structure here is for picking up pollen and nectar. Those little structures at the base are for tasting and paying attention to its meal. We'll shift to the thorax. The thorax is where, from the ventral side, the six legs are attached. We can see also that wings are from the thorax. Let's see if we can see the end of one of these little legs. Just the little hooks on the end of each little leg. Or are those little arms, you know, take your pick. They're appendages that are utilized for both feet and for hands, actually. Notice the little spears, the little spikes. Those are also uh, handy for attaching to whatever it is they're interested in. Let's see if we can slip off to the abdomen. We can see there's still a little, little life left in this uh, refrigerated critter. Uh, it's from that area there in the abdomen that the stinger would protrude. Her stinger is right now internal. As a modified egg-laying tube, it is now used as a defense mechanism. You don't want to get stung by a wasp. Inside the abdomen are important parts. The heart is in the abdomen. Notice the wings up close with the veins that give support. Notice they're transparent. And it's often wing venation that entomologists use to identify species. This is one of the narrow-waisted wasps. It's incredible that through that little narrow waist, the intestines, a nerve, a ventral nerve cord goes through there, as well as uh, remnants of the circulatory system. It's important to the wasp that this connection between the hairy thorax on the upper right and the shiny abdomen on the lower left, there's this connection. See what else we can reveal here. Notice the base of the antennae. Recognize that these antennae are curled a little bit. One of the ways that you can tell in flight, the coiled antennae is from female wasps. Non-coiled or straightened antennae are male wasps. This is uh, the compound eye. You can see the various little facets. Each one of those little structures has its own single lens. 
and it's all wired to the brain so they get uh, a single picture. Probably couldn't recognize you if you came into the room, but compound eyes are especially good for picking up motion. If you ever tried to hit a fly with a fly swatter, they can respond very quickly to motion. This is the base of the two antenna. You'll notice on either side it's the base of the compound eye. The head is loaded with sensory structures. Each of those little hairs is able to pick up some kind of a sensation from the environment. Insects are totally in tune with what's going on around them. They have a tough exoskeleton, but lots of exits and intrusions into that exoskeleton, mainly for a nervous system that's underrated. They have a structure for lapping up liquid, as well as a structure for doing a little bit of chewing. So with their very adept mouth, they're able to suck and chew and get the job done out there in the world of uh, nutrition.